morning. morning. It's so good to see you all. We are all blessed to be together in the Lord's house today. So with that being said, I'd like to invite each of you to my baptism today. Three, three o'clock at Mount Zion Baptist Church at St. Pastor Greer will do the honors later today of baptizing you through immersion. So if you'd like to come, three o'clock. Next Sunday, Pastor Greer is also asking for all hands on deck training for a training meeting for the car, bike, and craft show on Saturday, August 21st. After worship, please go downstairs for pizza and training. Make sure you read over the entire bulletin so you don't miss any upcoming events and times of fellowship and also in the tear-off portion. Mark your attendance, list any prayer requests, sign up as a volunteer, and or order t-shirts on the other side. Then drop that in the offering plate when it goes by later this that being said, Pastor Greer will lead us in our opening prayer. Let's give our young people a hand. We have a Ethan, Brother Ethan, Brother Ethan Palmer. Ethan's had some wonderful young people in the mall. We got grandchildren in the house this morning. So let's just show them right up in this church, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? Uh, one correction, if you look on the back, I'll give Jim out of trouble again. If you see the birthdays, it says Jim Hope, August the 1st. That's for our older brother. Just so he can, uh, I don't want to get him in the doghouse there. So. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. See, Jim, you owe me that, buddy. <laughs> All righty, let's see. Um, thank you, Miles, for announcing the wonderful baptismal that we will, uh, that will take place at 3 o'clock. Give Mount Zion a hand clap of praise for being a wonderful, wonderful, a wonderful neighbor. Um, I think everything is covered. Everything is looking good. You're looking good this morning. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Just to touch base again, the good news is our church is large enough that we can spread out uh, the mass. You feel free to use it at your discretion. If you've been vaccinated, raise your hand. So look around. And see, that makes us feel pretty good. You'll notice we are, we're about almost, a, we're 99%. Isn't that wonderful? So, and if you're not, wear your mask. And we appreciate you loving us as we love you. Let us go to the throne of grace in, in prayer. Lord, O oh sovereign God, you are able to do all things but fail. You're infinite in wisdom. You're omnipotent. You're all-seeing, all-knowing. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, you thought it not robbery to send your son to save sinners like us, that we can have life and we can have it more abundantly. Lord, through it all, Zoe has come together this morning to lift up the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Show up here today, Lord, and have your way. Reveal yourself to us in a new way. If you be so merciful to touch us with your finger of love, we'll be so careful to give you all the praises you so richly deserve. We just thank you, Lord, for being among the living. Lord, we thank you for being in our right mind. Lord, we thank you for a reasonable portion of our health and strength. Just thank you for keeping this great church, this great body of believers. Lord, Feel your Holy Spirit within us so that we can have a hallelujah good time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The next congregational hymn is such a beautiful, beautiful hymn as they lead us in it. Just meditate on the words and 
After that, I want to bring up a wonderful man that has done some wonderful work in the tedious aspects of a church, which is the graveyard. And I'm not going to steal this thunder, but uh, Warren Berger has put a lot of work with others, with others, on uh, what he's going to tell us. But in the meantime, this old favorite of mine in the garden, would you please quiet? <laughs> Well, this is a little bit intimidating to me because I'm not very good at speaking in front of a crowd. But anyway, I'll do the best I can. Okay, the I was asked to say a few words about the cemetery and what has been uh, developed over there. To start off with, uh, <clears throat> My great-grandfather was born in 1835 in Baden-Baden, Germany. And uh, I think at the age of 15 or 16, he came across to the United States and uh, came to Ellis Island. And uh, anyway, we picked up the, all the history from there on. But anyway, several times I've been in Germany for different reasons. And... One time I went down to that cemetery that was close to where, well, near Baden-Baden. Uh, I thought I would see if I could find any 
any uh, graves or whatever was, would uh, show some, some uh, history of the family. And it was such a frustrating experience that I gave up and didn't pursue that anymore. <clears throat> so, a few years ago, I came to this church and, uh, of course, met Mr. Freeman and several others. We would meet here every week and do various maintenance things for the church and so on and so forth. And become very good friends with uh, the, the Freeman family and everybody associated with the group that we would work on to uh, take care of different things. Well, a couple of years ago, I guess a little more than a couple of years ago, Mr. Morris uh, passed away. He was the one that took care of most of the cemetery activities and so forth. Well, having the difficulty that uh, I had from Germany, I thought, well, I would take on a task of identifying all of the grave sites over there. Morris had done a good job. He had it all written down on a map but it was still somewhat difficult to locate different people. And I had been here before whenever different uh, people that grew up in this neighborhood had left and then came back and wanted, wanted to visit the grave sites of the, some of their ancestors. And then I had to go uh, do a lot of searching to find it. So anyway, I decided that maybe it would be a good way to identify go through all the, all the grave sites, identify everything, and get, get locations and all that. So I've done that. And uh, I've got everybody listed. Now there's some that are unknown because we don't have indications on the grave sites as to who they belong to because some of these people were buried in the early 1800s. So anyway, what I have completed if you look on the other side of the church, to the left of the three crosses, there's a what I call a shadow box. Or, I mean, it's various. Uh, but anyway, it has the map. I've divided everything up in sections. I got a one one uh, book that has a list of everybody from alpha, in alphabetical order from A to the N. And in another, there's another book that shows everybody in the in each section one through seven. So anybody that comes wants to know where somebody's grave is, it is easy to find. All they have to do is look at that, look what number it is on the section and where it is on the map, and uh, they can find whatever they want. I did have some help. Jim Lane and Jerry Moore helped me, and uh, different uh, I don't know, maybe I don't I haven't mentioned everybody, but if I did, if I forgot to mention somebody, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, uh, that is the story, and if you, there's, there's markers along the street that divides each section, and that's what they're for. It's relative to the, the uh, box and everything that's over on the back side of the, of the cemetery. So I did this because I felt like it was the right thing to do. And I hope that everybody appreciates all the effort I put forth and everybody else that helped on it. Thank you very much. Just wanted to say thank you again, Brother Warren, for all your hard work. Um, our first response, I mean, our first scripture reading will come from Ephesians 4, 25 through 5, 2. I'm reading in the New International Version. Please follow along whatever version you have. When you found it, please say amen. amen. So Ephesians 4, 25 through 5, 2. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, 
and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, do something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with any form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, and therefore as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. And now for our responsive reading. You can find it in your hymnal book on page 848. Psalm 130. When you have found it, please say amen. Let us all begin together with the opening statement. In my distress, I cry to the Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and the Lord's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, nor for the morning, nor for O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord is plenteous redemption. In my distress I cried to the Lord, deliver me, O Lord. Now Miss Carla will come up and speak to us. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Good to see you. Hey, Pastor, I know I'm supposed to give a, a mission moment this morning, but can I get a praise report from the Lord again? Yes. Well, I just want to praise God this morning, and he is truly worthy to be praised today. And if you think that he's worthy to be praised today, I want you to say hallelujah on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah on today. So I truly, truly have a praise report on this morning. Um, many of you may have missed me last week. Hopefully you did. Um, I was out of town with some friends at a conference of a um, senior pastor, a spiritual father of mine, and um, a good friend of mine who's also a pastor invited me down, and um, she said, well, let's just save money, you know, we're going to stay in the same room, and unknown to me, she had been a little ill, and she had also invited another guest to be with us in the room, so I flew in late Friday night, I didn't get a chance to see them, but they went on to the conference because my plane was delayed. And then they came back to the room, and when she got back to the room, she wasn't feeling well. So I'm here to say that God is a good God. He is a sovereign God on this morning. I spent three days with this lady in, inside this room because after I started figuring out she wasn't feeling well, we, then we started to take care of her. So we started to nurture her and take care of her. Then she started to run fevers, and then she started to tell me, well, I don't have any taste. You know, I don't have any smell right now. And as she began to tell me this, I'm like, oh, Lord, this lady has COVID. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, never, I never fret, I never stop. You know, that, this weekend gave me the opportunity to learn what it meant to be a servant. So we continued to serve her and nurse on her. But on Sunday morning when we got up, I said, we're not going to the conference. We're going to have a COVID test. So we went and we had a COVID test. And um, by the time I had returned home on Monday, my test had returned back, and it was negative. But um, her test came back, and she was positive, and she's still kind of on the weather, so I, I want you to lift her up in prayer. Her name is Latasha, but I wanted to be safe because I had been down there, and I didn't want to bring anything to my family, so I went and took another COVID test on Thursday, and praise be to God, it came back negative as well, so I had my shot. 
and I am fully vaccinated. So um, just want to remind you guys how important it is to take the shot uh, if you haven't already and you decided, you know, I know that something between you and God is the spirit leads you. By all means, I encourage you to get the shot. But nevertheless, Brother Warren, thank you so much. I'm not going to be as elegant as you were in speaking. I'm just going to give the, <laughs> the mission moment this morning. Um, and I just want you guys, you know, that was part of my mission this beginning was to be a servant. But we can also do mission in every day. One of the missions that we support on a daily basis, and I encourage you to continue, is the Gwinnett Co-op. Uh, continue to bring your, um, your food and, and your donations as possible. But I also want to lift up the, um, the Murphy Heart Mission. It's an independent nonprofit organization committed to meeting the needs of our abused and neglected children. Um, that's in this treatment center. There's, it's a specialized foster care for the community of these kids. And there were two wonderful United Methodist women that started this service. The service is available to our kids, no matter sex, race, creed, or color. Um, if they are in need and they need this service, then they're able to go to Murphy Harp. Um, Sarah Harp and, let me get it right. There was two wonderful Methodist women that came together to, to um, actually start this, um, this foundation. So I want to, today to encourage you guys, when you are giving uh, your tithes and offering today, that you give a special mention on today for the um, Murphy Harp so that we can help support our kids, our kids that are in need on today. I also want to invite you and encourage you out to come out because we're going to do a special mission program on October the 19th where we're going to go out and we're going to help the uh, Murphy Heart Center and we're going to help spruce up their uh, media center. So I encourage each and every one of you, even though it is a United Methodist Women event, everybody's invited. It is, it's not um, only for women, it is for all of you. So if you would be so kind to volunteer and um, look at your calendar and see if you can join us on that day, we will need your help and support. We're going to do a little painting, we'll do a little um, Straighten it up there. We'll do whatever needs to have these kids to feel um, safe and have an atmosphere where they can grow and blossom in. Also, I want to invite you guys out to come. Uh, we have a United Methodist meeting on October the 29th, Laura? August the 29th. Okay, so I need help here. So August the 29th is when we're going to have our United Methodist Women meeting. So if you know someone, invite them out. We encourage everybody to come out and be a part of it. So again today, glory be to God. I just thank him for being our, my Lord and my Savior. And as you guys are giving your tithes and offering today, don't forget the Murphy Heart organization. Thank you. God is a good God. And I thank Carla. She kept me posted and she told me about it. And I said, well, that's a that's a powerful thing. She and the, she didn't do it justice because the lady really didn't let her know what was going on. And you know she was in a situation where she was exposed and didn't know what was going on. But even when we don't know, God knows. See, He's a sovereign God. He can do all things. You may know some things, but God knows all things. And I just tell you. Church, we can rest on that fact. We do what we're supposed to do as believers and worshipers. And as the young folks would probably say, he got our back. Somebody say amen. 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 Thank you, church. You've been giving and giving, and we appreciate everything that you do do. And at this time, I'm going to call our ushers forward. Have we... Did we get to St. John? You want to, yeah, go ahead and do St. John first, then we'll get to that. He's doing such a good job, and that is important. Yeah, very good. Thank you, thank you. Like Pastor said, our second scripture reading will be St. John um, 6, 6.34, and then 41 through 51. Again, I'm reading in the New International Version. When you find it, please say Amen. This is St. John. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. And at this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. 
No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The word of God for the people of God. We're getting at um, God being God. You know, even the Muslims would say, well, Jesus was a nice prophet. But the theme today, we're talking about a sovereign God. Jesus was very God. He was very human, but he was very God. And so that's important for us to understand that when we witness and serve and Praise Jesus. We're praising God. Amen? Amen. Yes, he is. So at this time, uh, we have these wonderful ushers. Do you ever tell your ushers thank you? Give them a hand clap of praise. <laughs> these same two soldiers that, that led us through the battle of outside, they came in and they're doing it likewise and they are good men, and we're just so blessed to give David a special ham clap of praise because he could easily say, well, you know, I got this condition, so I'm going to stay home. But no, he realized how good his God is. So I thank you for David and Mike, and if they would please come. Bible says, a cheerful giver. Are you glad to be able to give this morning? Somebody say, amen. If you realize you could be broke, busted, and disgusted, not having a dime in your pocket, and you can give, somebody say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for every member. Lord, I thank you. Some churches, Lord, this morning are hurting. Some are gone astray. Some are confused and confound. But, Lord, you steadied in the way of Zor. That's why we go to you, Lord, in grace and mercy before your throne, knowing that Jesus of Nazareth is almighty God, is a sovereign God. I just thank you this morning for these, your dear members, the families of Zor that are here, whether they're watching virtually, that send in their tithe, that bring forth their tithe, that deliver their tithes to the church, write their checks every month, Lord, knowing that that tenth belongs unto you. Lord, in these times of uncertainty, I ask you, I beseech you to steady our finances. Lord, bless our finances. Bless our storehouses, Lord. Lord, give us more than enough. And we will continue to prove our obedience to you by giving unto your house. Bless these families, Lord. Keep them in perfect peace. Thank you, Lord, for the food that you place on our table. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you with 10,000 tongues. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this body of believers that have the right mind in you, Christ. Thank you for them, Lord. 
I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you. Thank you for those that are about to give, those that have given, those that will give, those that continue to give. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise your name so richly deserves. These prayers we ask in uh, Jesus Christ's name, the name that all knees will bow, that all hearts say amen. Amen. We came this far by faith. We're going to continue this tedious path. It'll be by faith. I don't know about you, but I'm not turning around. My hand has been set to the gospel plow. Please stand. Seated. Sorry, Mike and Dave. They they were in a little track meet there, trying to get to the front of the church before the song's over. Sorry, <laughs> fellas. They made it though. Didn't they, 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 they make it? Didn't they make it? Amen. And how many know we ain't young as we used to be? Say amen. amen. All 
right then. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. You know, this candid conversation is needed so much in church, and uh, we're getting ready for our pastor's prayer, and I'm just going to make it plain. <clears throat> As a, I generally say American African, because I was born in America, but you can say it either way if you like, African American, American African. Um, part of the challenge when you, you're trying to do right is the stigma of the stereotypes that you go before. Just to make it plain, you know, we, we feel a certain kind of way and, uh, about those things. And one thing I have to applaud our black and our white Christians and Zohar, both sides do everything they can to be good Christians. And it, it's not common. When you come to Zohar, you experience a phenomenon of the Holy Spirit, let me say, let me say. Because, see, it, 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 since I've been here, of the members, I haven't met one black have the syndrome of wanting something for nothing. Somebody say amen. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing uh, that they realize how important what they do means to you. And that's a burden that they have to bear. I, I'm just saying it. They'll probably never say it, but I have to tell the truth about it. Uh, we got Carlos. We got the Dillers. We have Matthews, and if I miss the names, then no, just raise your hand if you're black. How about that, Miles King? And 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 I want to tell you, these are some good people. See, it, it's nice to be able to get to the point where I don't have to see black or white, but I can say it's some good people at Zor. And that's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. We have some good people at Zor. And um, which is why in our Bible uh, study teacher mentioned that I, when we open up the doors of the church, I, I generally say something along of like-mindedness because I believe everybody here tries to have the Christ mind. Doesn't mean, I know everybody was raised different. Somebody say amen. amen. But we, when we come together and when we do things, we try to fellowship in a righteous way. And let me take some pressure off the white people. That's all you can do. Say amen. What, what, what happened with your ancestors back then? That's, you didn't have anything to do with it. But you, you got today. You can do what you do today. And let me tell you, you all are doing a wonderful job of being all you can be in Christ. And that's what it's about. And I felt so good about our members, and in particular since Two of the greatest members joined under my watch, <clears throat> uh, Miles and uh, Errol King. And then we had, come on up, Miss Matthews. God called us another soldier. Somebody say amen. And, and I want you to get to know all of our people, which is why we have events. The events are for us to strengthen our fellowship. Don't, don't, don't miss the internal value of getting to know because these are the people that God sent to help pray for you and prop you up. Say amen. amen. We didn't just come to sit in the pews and go back. These are the people that God have designed to help you along the way. Amen. So you do yourself a disservice as a church member when you don't get to know. And this young lady here is a praying warrior, so much so that the pastor's prayer this morning, I'm going to ask her to lead us in prayer, and then you turn to 270, and after she concludes, let's read the Lord's Prayer together. But give Mrs. Matthews a hand as she comes. Father God, we just come today with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you, Lord, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the beginning and the end. We thank you, Father, that you all knowing, all seeing, and all hearing. So our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Father, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We thank you for every opportunity, Father, you give us to lift you up, to magnify your name, because truly it's all about you. We pray we die to the flesh and the spirit rise up in us. We thank you today for the body of Christ, the, all, everyone that is here at Zohar. Father, you all knowing, all seeing, and all hearing, you know each one of their needs. So as we lift them up to you today, Father, we pray that you will meet their need. You said, I will supply every need according to my riches in Christ Jesus. All we got to do is believe and receive by faith. So we thank you today. We pray for our pastor. Continue to keep Pastor Greer in the name of Jesus, Father, that the word would come forth unhindered, unharmed. Father, that we will have attentive ears to hear your word. What thus says the Lord, that we will do better each day because you are still working on us. Father, when we are weak, you make us strong. Father, when we are in need, you supply that need. Father, everything that is done is done to your glory. And we thank you. You said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And we believe and receive what your word is saying to us today. We also pray for those who need comforting. Father, that you will comfort our lost, comfort the Greer family, and all the other families who are losing loved ones. Father, keep your loving arms of protection around them. Let them know to lean on you, rely on you, and trust in you. Because, Father, you said you won't leave us, and we believe that. We pray for our choir, our musician. Father, everyone in the body of Christ today that is doing the best they can do, because you want our best. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory that your word will go forth today. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Amen. Glory to God. Turn on your phone or the Bible pew, your own Bible, to Colossians near the end of the Bible, right in front of Timothy. We're going to look at, uh, thank you, choir. We're going to look at chapter 1. Say preeminent. 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 Our God is sovereign. He's preeminent. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Lewis. Lewis is handling all the precious cargo. Amen. <laughs> sovereign God. Hmm. Nothing can get in his way. Nothing, the Bible said, God's arm's not too short that he can't reach you. It's because he's sovereign. There's no disease that God can't heal. Now, the will of God is different. Say amen. amen. And we don't always understand the mysteries of his will. But whatever you're going through, you pray like you're praying to a sovereign God that can do all things because he can. I'm reminded of David, Colossians chapter 1, as you'll get there, of David. He had done a bad thing and the baby got sick and he prayed and he cried and he laid prostrate. And it's so eye-opening to me because as soon as the baby died, David jumped up. He jumped up and he went in worship. But they couldn't understand. Why did you stop so quick? He said, nobody, nobody understands God and the mystery is God. He could do all things. And once it wasn't done, then he, he went right back to worshiping God. So we have to be able to understand that it's thy will be done, that it's God will, that he's sovereign because he didn't do it, don't mean he can't do it. Somebody say amen. Did you hear me, church, this morning? I'm, I'm telling you, just because he didn't heal the COVID in the room next door, don't mean he can't heal yours. Amen. It, 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 it's a situation where... God does what he want to do. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you, he's a, he's a sovereign God, and it doesn't depend on anybody else. So if you found Colossians chapter 1, let's look at these verses about the sovereignty or the preeminence of God. And the God that this is directing us at, by Paul, who was in jail at the time he wrote it, is Jesus Christ. Listen to these words very, very carefully. Chapter 1, beginning in verse 15. No, I'm going to back it up because you need to know this. 14 begins this way. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Let us pray. 
Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. There is nothing too hard for God. I don't care what situation you're dealing with. Yes, this delta, but threat not thyself because God is a sovereign God. God can bind all things. God can loose all things. God can do all things. God will do what pleases him. So our, our task is to be in his fellowship and to do just what you have done this morning. Come and lift up his name. Exalt his name and in, in all that you do, put him first. What do you mean? Yo, what do you mean? You're, if you got to go on a trip, pray before you go. If you're on your way to work, give him thanks that you have that job. If you're on a fixed income and you're able to make your ends meet, thank God, put him preeminence. He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God. You know, the children of Israel, he, he did that in such a way. He said, I brought you out on the wings of an eagle. I brought you out to show them that it, it wasn't nothing that they did. And see, that's part of the problem for some folks. They can't get I out of the way. I, 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 I. So you can't get there because you've got to get to that humble state of knowing that God is God all by itself, that God is sovereign, that God is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the creator. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's a Prince of Peace. He's an on-time God. He's a way maker. How is it that uh, a group of people that came out of slavery can pray? They were praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who can do all things. I mentioned Willie Phillips, a man that didn't graduate from the third grade, but his love for God, he realized that God is a sovereign God. God is God all by himself. So if we continue, Acts, one version says, and when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. This sovereign God who's preeminent. In other words, he was before. This is some of that language we get from uh, St. John when he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. The logos, the logos, God, this God, when, when in Genesis, when it's God looked around, he said, let us. Jesus was there. Preeminent, superior, sovereign. See, God is not worried about uh, how much money he prints. Somebody say amen. God is not worried about inflation. Your God is beyond all of that. It doesn't matter what the interest rate is. It doesn't matter what the unemployment rate is. When, when God deems it's time for you to get a new job, you'll get a new job. Because God is sovereign all by itself. It doesn't matter what the Federal Reserve is about to do. You don't have to wait to Friday because the Federal Reserve is going to speak on Thursday and they'll let us know what's going to happen with the money supply, whether they'll be expanding it or not. And you, your God is sovereign. Oh, I, 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 it doesn't matter whether Donald Trump is in the White House or Joe Biden. God is sovereign. God is above it all. And as Christians, we got to know you can have your political affiliations, but above all of that, you got to know your God is sovereign. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It matters, but it doesn't matter. Yes, it's a paradox because you got to do all that you can to make your community better. Say amen. Oh, I wish and pray. And the prayer warriors have prayed that we get back to a senility in our discourse. See, I said it is nothing wrong with fighting over whether you want lower taxes or whether you want social programs. 
But when we start attacking each other, see, we can't attack each other because that person was created by God. Say amen. And we just got to remember that fight all you want if you think that uh, we need to be a little more fiscally sound. Fight all you want if you think that we need to expand Medicaid. That's your prerogative as a citizen. But know at the end of the day, your God, your God is above it all. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who. Hebrews 1 said, have have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. I'm just trying to tell you God is sovereign. He, he's the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created. Grasp that for a minute. And if you deal with science, there's no conflict in science and religion. See, we need science. Somebody say amen. Without science, we may have not had the vaccine. Without science, there are a lot of things we wouldn't know. We need science. But see, you got to have religion to balance science so that we won't come up with Test two babies. Somebody say amen. Because see, there is a limit where God won't go, but there is no conflict between science and religion. God created it all. You 66 million, billion, or whatever the case may be years ago, there's the Big Bang. And scientists can prove certain things, but then they have to stop and pause when somebody asks, well, who made that? Where was the first cause of that? If science explained the phenomenon of nature, God created it all. So, visible and invisible. Doesn't matter the throne, which throne, Saudi Arabia, I don't care who it is, God knows what's going on. Dominion of principalities, republics, powers. All these things were created by him because he's a sovereign God and he's before all things. And in him all things are constant. And he is the head. See, so what are you telling us today as I get ready to close? Put him first. Put him first. Do Use every intellectual ability, cognitive functions that you have. Be all that you can be. Use your reason. Use it. As a matter of fact, that's what I love about Methodists. We have a theological t task. It consists of four things. And at uh, Asbury, I like the fact we expanded it to five, but uh, it's reported. He didn't directly say it, but in his sermons, John Wesley gave us, he said, primacy. In other words, the scripture is first. So if you ever get into any kind of situation, you look to the scriptures for your answers. Amen. Second, you look at tradition, and that's the tradition of the early church fathers and the early church. What did the apostles, what did the disciples do? Next is your experience, which is why we are growing as a church, because experience is what we experience together, and we have to fellowship with each other. And when we fellowship each other, the Holy Spirit comes in, and it's called spiritual formation. He forms us, he shapes us, he molds us through the experiences that we have. And then finally, we believe in reason. We believe in reason. So yes, use all that you can, be all that you can be, but no one thing. There's only one sovereign God, and that's the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God bless you.
Come on, I need to see everybody clapping. Everybody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's be on one accord. I'm looking if you're not. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Give the Lord the praise. Amen. Amen. Not me. You're not, you're not praising me. You're praising that sovereign God. Amen. That's who you're praising. Did you have a good time today? Now, if you, somebody normally sit next to you, I want you to call them between the next couple of days and say you were missed. Can you do that for me? And I'm going to get them. If you miss a Sunday, we're going to do the same thing for you. That's the church we got to be. We got to be that kind of church where we love each other, love each other, love each other. But you, the world better not get it twisted. We ain't no pushover. Somebody say amen. We ain't nobody's doormat. Now, we love each other because that's the word of God. But collectively, nobody can come against us. Amen? Amen. Because we serve a sovereign God, and God fight our battles for us. Amen? Amen. But every now and then, you have to get off your assets. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, he'll, he'll fight them as long as you take your steps. You take the step you're supposed to be, and he'll take two. Isn't that all right? You get up and do what you're supposed to be, and he'll, 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 this sovereign God will come in the midst of it, and it'll be like a mystery. you say, how did that happen? Where did that favor come from? Because faith without works is dead. Faith without works. So are we ready to close church? Can somebody give the pastor a hand? I think I did all right this morning myself. Give this wonderful choir a hand. We'll be in prayer about how the flow is going to be, but know that we, we, we're, we're doing what thus said the Lord to our best of our ability. Give this young man a hand, Brother Miles. A bigger hand for being baptized. Amen? Amen. Amen. One of the two ordinances that he said, do this in obedience of me, communion and baptism. So that's glorious. Stand to your feet. I love closing with Hebrews 13, 20 and 13, 21, where you'll find these words in the King James Version. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.
his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Go in peace.